Well, now we're excited to introduce a brand new feature on WWDD Scoop on the Poop. A feature that should really help you decide or figure out uh, for issues of the day what is poop and what is truth. To help see the fact and the fiction in the issues of today. We understand it's so hard on social media. There's so many different news stories coming from both credible and unreliable sources. You think one thing and then the next post you see contradicts it. It can be really confusing and people get scared and people just want to believe what they want to believe. So there's a lot of poop floating around there mixed in with a lot of truths. So we're going to put it to the sniff test. Finding truth in the poop. This is the sniff test. For our first sniff test, we are diving into an ongoing debate in the world of dog rescue. Recently, there was a very heart-wrenching social media post by an experienced dog rescuer from Ontario, Canada. It was packed with emotion, her truths, and some serious criticism of rescues operating to import dogs from meat farms in Korea. Given her experiences fostering two of these dogs, she claims these dogs could not be rehabilitated and should be euthanized rather than rescued. This is a sentiment shared by many. There are dog lovers on both sides of this issue. Well, actually, there are more than two sides to this particular sniff test. So to dig into this further, I have enlisted the help of Lila. We say hello to Thanks, our Amber. Lila. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's our pleasure to have you, Lila. Lila is new to the WWDD team. We've been working with her since she came to live with us as a foster. Lila has lived through the horror that is a meat farm in Korea. She was one of a group of dogs that were saved in June of this year by Humane Society International. She made her way from Korea with her group to Montreal where HSI set up a temporary shelter to assess the dogs. At that time, Lila was actually pregnant with puppies. Is that right? Yes, Bumble, that's correct. I had the puppies while I was still in Montreal, and then we all made our way to Nova Scotia in July, with all my puppies finding forever families here in Nova Scotia before the end of the summer. Thank you to all those families for welcoming my babies into your hearts and homes. I appreciate the great care that they're getting, and we sure love seeing the updates you share. Indeed. So, given what you lived through, I feel it's safe to call you our resident expert on importing rescue dogs. Here at WWDD, we are all rescues, but the rest of us are from Canada. So, based on your experiences, what would you say in response to this rescuer's post that all the dogs should be euthanized rather, rather than rescued? Well, as you can likely imagine, I'm on the side of rescuing versus euthanizing. I think I'm one of those cases that definitely can be saved. I'm not saying that all meat farm dogs are like me. A lot of times when you get animals that have been so severely neglected, who knows what kind of horrors they had to endure in their life, that's going to have an effect on them behaviorally, but also physiologically. I think that that's lost all too often with people because dogs can't really speak to share their truth, that we forget the impact of head injuries. Look at those people that have had repeated blows to their head, multiple concussions, that does affect their behavior. Any sort of brain injury can affect one's behavior and unfortunately when people are choosing to punish or abuse dogs, it's often hard impacts to the dog's head. Again, I'm not saying that's with every dog, but all too often, such things are overlooked when we're considering dogs and the issues they may have. 
So especially coming from a meat farm scenario where I can tell you as a fact, because I lived it, we did not have ideal conditions. We weren't properly socialized or cared for. We were all neglected and many abused. So I understand problems can occur in an environment like that. But certainly, it doesn't mean that all of us are hopeless cases. Some of us can grow and learn and be rehabilitated. Yes, I agree. I've seen how far you've come in just a few short months that you've been staying with us. I know you certainly are a different dog than when you first came in the door. Actually, back then, it seemed you did not even realize that you were a dog. I know you still struggle with trusting people, Lila, and you live in that fear that something bad can happen at any time if there's a loud noise or any sudden movements. I see you have a little bit of a panic still. Yes, I am still a bit haunted by my experiences at the farm, but I'm learning slowly but surely to trust and that both you guys and your people will keep me safe and well cared for as long as I'm here until we find a wonderful forever family for me too. Yes, we will certainly find you an amazing family. I agree with your take on this sniff test too. My concern, other than the generalization of the Korean meat farm dogs being unadoptable, I mean, look at you, you're living, breathing proof that there is hope for some of these dogs, but I think my biggest concern with the viralness of this post is that it's being leveraged in so many ways that the original poster never intended. When I read the comments of people sharing her post, they're using this woman's heartbreak and having to euthanize both her fosters from Korea after working for months with them. People are then using it to say that rescues as a whole are not good dogs, that they're not worth the effort, that rescues are volatile and unpredictable, lots of issues, always going to have a problem with a rescue. There's other pushback, too, between if you bring in dogs from out of country or not. There is pushback against the Humane Society International itself and what it does. And I think that's where you get into more than just two sides of this issue. There are so many different negative angles that people are leveraging this woman's painful experience for. And I simply can't believe that was ever her intent. Totally agree, Bumble. I think as much as she's using that blanket statement of euthanizing rather than rescuing and bringing dogs like me into various countries where we aren't on the menu, but rather on a couch or a bed, she doesn't intend to vilify rescue dogs. When I read the post, I can tell that she's still full of pain and hurt. And that's hard. It's hard for an individual, after years of being in rescue, to have a dog that you can't help. That something just goes sideways, or like we said, you just don't know for certain the life these dogs had before. So you feel broken, because it's like you've done everything for this dog, but on top of the pain and loss, you also feel failure. And you have that tied into your emotion and your ego. And that's where I feel maybe her lashing out is coming from. The Humane Society International arguably should do better assessments and likely in Korea have those assessments done. Set up your temporary shelter there for two weeks or more. More is better, of course. And then only transport those dogs that are responding positively to the rehabilitation efforts. Not only would you potentially decrease costs, but you also save these dogs that are already suffering so much the stress of travel if they aren't able to be rehabilitated. They don't have to take on that stress as well. And those dogs that are responding well, well, you could use them to start to change the stigma in Korea itself that they cannot be pets. It would also 
help to assure the safety, health, and welfare of the rescues and pet population in the countries that they're being sent to by completing longer-term assessments in Korea, both behavioral but also physical or medical. Yes, it's definitely better to provide ideas to improve one's process versus just generalizing that it all needs to stop and just euthanize them all. One should always be open to new and better ways and methods of doing things. Our mom has rehabilitated hundreds of dogs, but there were some she couldn't help because they were just too damaged, sick, or injured when they came into our care. But you know, there were other dogs that came in that she just couldn't reach. It didn't mean they were hopeless. She had to look beyond her experience, our facilities, and her ego to see that these dogs simply needed a different person or situation to rehab successfully. So, she would then work with the rescue to strategize about what the dogs needed and who, where, and how that could be provided. You're right, Bumble. Perhaps this rescuer, despite her best efforts, simply wasn't the right fit for what those particular dogs required. HSI and other rescues arguably need to do a better job at supporting their phenomenal foster homes and ensure that they are the right fit for the needs of each dog. I'm sure glad your mom knew you guys could help me. That was a fit. Yes, she did. You are the only dog we've fostered here, actually. We helped other dogs in some other ways, but simply can't do what we used to, just because of different physical space and facilities. And sometimes it's just not the right fit. Yes, it's sad but true. I hope that one woman's struggle is enough to start a dialogue, to identify areas that need to improve, and in the end, improves the lives of dogs and their rescuers. Let's not allow her story to be used to justify biases against rescue dogs. There are far too many dogs of every size, breed, age, and location globally that have been treated unfairly and inhumanely. That can be phenomenal yes. pets. Agreed. I'm still a work in progress, but I know that I can be a great dog for someone and my puppies are already thriving in their homes. Don't let one social media post serve as a death sentence for so many dogs. That's the result of this sniff test. We know not all dogs are the same and certainly recognize that some rescues are better than others. But don't let your issues with one rescue or one dog put you off rescuing a future dog. Find a rescue that resonates with your values and work through them to find your next furry family member. That's all for Lila and me, Bumble. As always, you know, I'm here until we say hello again. If you like these silly dog shows, then subscribe. If you like these silly dog shows, then subscribe. If you like these silly dog shows and you want to watch them all the time, then why don't you click to subscribe or like us on Facebook? <laughs>